Hello and welcome to Thought for the Day. Patron saints. Everybody's got one. There's one for pretty well every condition of life, every circumstance, every occupation. From St. Valentine to St. Swithin, there's a saint for it. St. Swithin, pray for me. St. Christopher, pray for me. I have a journey to go on. Now, what's happening here when we speak to a saint and ask for the saint's prayer? Well, as traditionally received by the Church of England, saints are commemorated, but not actually invoked in prayer. The understanding, which is based on the Bible, is that prayer to God is effected by individuals, you and me and all our sisters and brothers, and is given over to God and helped to God by the power of God's Holy Spirit, God the Spirit. Uh, St Paul writes in his epistle to the Romans, chapter 8, and God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. When Jesus commissioned his first disciples to go out and spread the good news of God, it was through the inspiration, literally the breathing in, of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. That's us. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. The Spirit prays for us and in us, and Jesus brings our prayers to God the Father. But the idea of appealing to saints also has a sound and a helpful root. And to do that, I'm going to turn for this week's poem to John Betjeman. Now, you can have some surprising reactions to John Betjeman. Most churches give you an opportunity to hear at least one poem, Diary of a Church Mouse, of his on uh, harvest suppers, harvest festivals. Uh, sometimes his poems are read at Christmas, but he's felt, I think, to be a bit of a, a niche poet, uh, often humorous, often satirical, uh, in rhyming verse, perhaps a bit upper class, a bit effete, I think some might say a bit twee. I'm not sure that's fair, actually. Um, there is much in John Betjeman's poetry that is incredibly profound if we are prepared to dwell deeply in it, and no less the poem that we are to hear today. He was a very realistic man who had a living faith, and wrote deeply spiritual verse on occasions. And yet it was verse with a touch of almost unrelieved grimness a lot of the time. John Betjeman had for much of his life a genuine fear of death and dying. And he wasn't afraid to get that out there amongst his readers and to God. And the being able to get it out there is actually a very helpful place to be. The poem is about St Caddoc, who's actually a Welsh saint, um, commemorated a lot around the Monmouthshire area in Wales, and it was, who was actually a strong contender to be the patron saint of Wales, a title uh, taken eventually by St David. He was a nephew of St Petroc, after whom Padstow, in Cornwall is named, and we have a picture of uh, St. Caddoc. In which he is shown uh, with a stag. Uh, many saints were portrayed with stags. Um, it goes back into antiquity. Think of the mo more famous ones like uh, St. Hubert whose vision is depicted on the um, 
Jägermeister uh, spirit bottles. There is also, of course, St. Creedon, who uh, is always depicted with a pig. And sometimes St. Cadoc is depicted with a pig in iconography. We don't know exactly where his cell was for the short time he lived in Cornwall, and he did live in Cornwall for a while, in between ministering in Wales and going to found uh, religious houses in Brittany. We know it was near Harlin Bay, which is this very nice uh, looking bay here. And we know the location. Unfortunately, it's not been possible to establish the exact layout of his cell and chapel other than it was in a wooded area near St. Caddock's Farm, named after him. Some bits of the chapel survive, and rather incongruously, as you go around the farmyard, they're on top of the, the walls of the farmyard, uh, statuary and carved pillars. It's a remote place in winter. The gales blow in from the sea, and it's a solitary place of prayer. Betjeman places St. Caddock in the middle of the cycle of life, birth, death, creation, salvation, the enormous, wonderful cycle of God's work with his pilgrim people, around and around through all the changing scenes of life. Betjeman speaks in this poem unflinchingly of his own real fear of death, sometimes frighteningly even as a Christian. He speaks of the beautiful groves, the wooded areas like St. Caddock lived in, where the, the cells of the early saints were found. And he also speaks of a vision of the very oak trees growing in those groves, becoming eventually the coffins in which the saints were buried. And which later broke down to become the soil of the next generation of oak trees. God's wonderful cycle of creation. The crucial line in the poem is surely this one. Caddock's breath was breath of God. St. Caddock, Benjamin considered, was inspired. His breath was the breath of God the Spirit. And as God the Spirit is eternal, so St. Caddock's prayers in his little cell by the Cornish Sea are eternal. And as Caddock prayed forward for generations yet to come and held them before God, so he prayed for John Benjamin, for you and for me, with the breath of God. And in that eternal cycle that is all held in God and in Christ, the saints do pray for us. All is blessedness. Let's hear the poem to conclude. A flame of rush light in the cell on holy walls and holy well, and to the west the thundering bay with soaking seaweed, sand and spray. O oh, good St. Caddock, pray for me here in your cell beside the sea. Somewhere the tree, the yellowing oak, is waiting for the woodman's stroke, waits for the chisel, saw and plane, to prime it for the earth again. And in the earth, for me inside, the generous oak tree will have died. St. Caddock blessed the woods of ash, bent landwards by the western lash, he loved the veined threshold stones, where sun might sometime bleach his bones. He had no cowering fear of death, for breath of God was Caddock's breath. 
Some cavern generates the germs to send my body to the worms. Today some red hands make the shell to blow my soul away to hell. Today a pair walks newly married along the path where I'll be carried. St. Caddock, when the wind was high, saw angels in the Cornish sky, as ocean rollers curled and poured their loud hosannas to the Lord. His little cell was not too small for that great God who made them all. Here, where St. Caddock sheltered God, the archaeologist has trod. Yet death is now the gentle shore with land upon the cliffs before, and in his cell, beside the sea, the Celtic saint has prayed for me. <laughs>